Let's dive into 10 tips and tricks to help you build better applications in Flutterflow. Tip number one is to build a responsive user experience by using hover states with the mouse region widget. When building a user experience, you can use hover states to prompt your users to take an action. In order to create a hover state, use the mouse region widget. Here, let's go ahead and use our hover state to animate one of our folders when a user hovers over them. Step one, we're gonna wrap our widget with the mouse region widget. Step two, we're going to set the border and fill color based on whether or not the mouse region has been hovered. Here, I'm using a conditional to set the primary color if the mouse region is hovered and the gray color if it is not. And I did the same for border color. Step three, we're going to create a scale animation that we can trigger on the action. In step four, I'm going to trigger the Lottie animation and the container animation on mouse enter. Here, you can also set actions and animations on mouse enter or on mouse exit. And now let's go ahead and test this. Now when our users hover over the folder, the animations are triggered, prompting the user for a much better experience. Number two is to utilize implicit animations within components. If you want this type of animation to exist in multiple places, convert your widget into a component and turn on implicit animations. This will allow your animation to replicate across all the locations of the component, plus there will be an implicit animation when certain widget properties are changed in run mode. Here, you can see that the fill color is animated at 1200 milliseconds on hover automatically. Tip number four is to utilize the command palette. By clicking the search button or pressing Command-K on a Mac or Control-K on Windows, you can search for a wide variety of settings, pages, components, and actions in Flutterflow that may take you a few extra clicks to get to. For example, let's control K and view all of our components. Or if I remember the component name, I can control K and navigate directly to the page. Or for example, if I want to jump directly into the typography page, control K, find typography, and then we can jump directly into the themes editor. Number four is a quick tip. You can edit component instances names directly in the widget tree, and you can double click to view the component. This is helpful in case you're still navigating to the pages and component section in Flutterflow to get to your components. Number five is to remember to utilize the child and sibling color indicators to navigate the tree. The orange circular load indicator will add your widget as a child within the previous widget. Once the indicator turns purple, however, the widget will be added as a sibling. Tip number six is to use shift plus click up to have greater control when dropping your widget into your page. A drop down menu appears with all the widgets closest to your intended drop zone. This is helpful when adding a widget to a complex page or smaller widget. And a little bonus tip here is you can use copy widget style to speed up this workflow. And now I can use shift click up in order to drop in a text widget into this very small container fairly easily. Tip number seven is only for Android users. If you weren't already aware, Flutterflow has a preview app. We can jump right into a test mode that's already running. Here, we're able to view our Proposal AI app with data without going through the steps of launching it manually. You can utilize it to view previous run modes of your project as well. This app will come in handy when iterating quickly on your design for your application. Tip number eight is to utilize safe mode for debugging. If your project freezes every time you open it and you're unable to access it or make changes, try opening it in safe mode. Simply add question mark safe mode to the end of your URL, which will open it without rendering the UI builder. Here's how it should look. Then you can use snapshots to revert your project back to where you were working last time before the crash happened, or control Z to undo the changes you made. After doing the first edit, the editor will exit from safe mode. You can utilize this to troubleshoot anytime you encounter freeze issues with your project. Tip number nine is to use the empty list widget toggle to prompt users in the application. When users are first entering your app, they may not have populated data. It's good practice to create an empty state prompt for these use cases. So your users know what to do and the app looks cleaner than this. Here's how you can do this easily in Flutterflow. Simply first navigate to your list view. Then toggle on the empty list widget. Here you can select between an image or a component. For this use case, let's populate it with the pre-created component. Now the empty state will appear with the pre-populated component. This will allow our users to have a better experience and know how to execute the next action in our application. Tip number 10 is to look at the logs for debugging. 
If you aren't already, try keeping the Chrome debug logs open or the Safari developer menu open while debugging. If your project fails to run in run mode or test mode, it may be due to some issue with the widget or configuration in your project. When we identify the issue, we log it in the browser's debug console or display it in a pop-up. You can open up your Chrome logs using F12 or for Safari going into the advanced settings and enabling the developer menu. The errors will be highlighted in red, and you can also execute your application while observing the flow. Bonus tip number 11 is to use recommended JSON paths for executing API calls. Let's do this for the Unsplash API. So after we set up our API call, we can click Test API, and if the call is successful, Flutterflow will pull the JSON body response and the headers. Now if we scroll down and select the Recommended tab, we can view the JSON paths and a preview of all the responses. Let's go ahead and easily select the JSON paths that we want to use. In this case, it's going to be the description as well as the URL image pass. We can also select a quick preview of the responses to make sure that we're getting the data that we need. Now I can jump into the selected tab and give names to all of our JSON paths that we will use throughout the application. Now let's navigate to our list view and query the API response that we previously set up. And now when I go to generate children, I can access our unsplash response and select our preset up JSON path name from the drop down menu. This should save you a little bit more time than having to manually set up your API or to copy and paste the JSON path names into your application. And lastly, I'm going to set the first image path in my list view to our photos item. And now if we go ahead and test, we're able to view all the dynamically generated photos from unsplash. And now I can do the same for the description JSON path name. That's it for this tips video. Share your tips and tricks for everyone in the comments below.